NVIDIA gave me access to play with their data center. Not sure why they did that, but while I was in there, I found something. Something that I think might change the future of virtual machines. Oh my gosh, that's so stinking fast. Did you see that? We have a CPU and we have a GPU, but now we have a DPU? <laughs> what is that? It turns out it's amazing. It's called the data processing unit. And let me tell you, this thing is intense. I got a chance to play with it, test it. I'll show you later in this video. But first, let's talk about why we need this thing, <laughs> this DPU thing, because it turns out we actually really did need it. By the way, shout out to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video and allowing me to mess with their servers. I didn't hack anything, I promise. Now first, let's talk about servers and how they've kind of changed a lot. And if you're like, what's a server? Well, it's kind of where the internet lives. Everything we do, every picture, every website is gonna be on a server somewhere in a data center. And back in the day, we kind of had too many servers. It was becoming a problem. You see, every time we wanted to deploy a new website, a new app, a new thing, we would have to deploy a new physical server. Filling up our racks, running out of space, using tons of power, it was crazy inefficient. This is where virtualization came in. You probably saw that coming, right? And using something like VMware, we can take all of those servers and put them onto one server which sounds kind of crazy, right? And each of these servers is now a virtual machine. Now this was actually a game changer. We could reduce the number of physical servers we had because we only have one physical server and each of those virtual machines would share the resources of that one physical server. But that's where our problem begins. And I want to focus in on Mr. CPU, our central processing unit doing the general stuff. You see his job got a lot harder. He went from managing just one server, one operating system to now managing a bunch of operating systems, a bunch of servers. He's being spread thin and used across multiple machines. That's literally what we do. Like seriously, some of our physical servers now have 30 to 40 to even more virtual machines on them, all sharing these server's resources. So yeah, Mr. CPU is getting taxed, but we made him bigger, better, and he could do more. To where a lot of our CPUs can handle so many virtual machines, it's crazy. So you're probably thinking, Chuck, where's the problem? Here's the problem. We didn't stop at virtualizing physical servers. No, 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 no. We thought, hey, what else can we virtualize? The networking. You see, in a data center, we're gonna have switches, routers, firewalls, and all kinds of security appliances. These, once upon a time, were their own physical boxes, just like servers. And you probably see where this is going. We thought, hey, we have all this stuff taking up space. Why don't we virtualize it? So that's what we did. In came software to find networking. All the cool networking stuff we could do on our physical boxes, we then threw it onto virtual machines on a server. And funny enough, the same people, VMware, that helped us virtualize our physical servers, they created NSX, which you gotta be really careful with saying, you gotta enunciate that. So now NSX has helped us virtualize all of our networking stack and security, cybersecurity stuff, to where they're no longer physical boxes handling their own business, but now they're sharing space and you guessed it, resources on one server, along with all the other machines and servers that we already virtualized. So now at this point, Mr. CPU, he's getting pretty stressed out. He was okay with handling servers. Let's virtualize those. But now all the networking and security and stuff? Back to stress mode, he's done. He went from a simple life of managing one OS on one server to now doing all of this. And even though we made him really big and strong with tons of cores and threads, he started to become the bottleneck, slowing things down. And one of the main reasons for that is that he wasn't really built for networking and security. Like he can do it, but he's more for general purpose. He's good at a lot of things, but when it comes to specialty things like encrypting and decrypting traffic, transferring lots of data and analyzing that data, he's like, he's okay. And he really started to sweat when our network started getting faster, going from one gigabit per second to 10 to 100 to 200, he couldn't keep up. He threw up his little CPU hands and said, I can't do this, I'm gonna quit. And we said, don't quit, we're gonna bring in some help. Don't worry. We brought in what's called a smart Nick. And no, I'm not talking about my video editor, Nick, even though he's the only smart Nick I need. <laughs> That was for you, buddy. Now here is the smart NIC. It is similar to a regular general NIC, which stands for Network Interface Card. Every computer has one, including yours, and it typically allows you to connect an ethernet connection to it and get internet. Servers have that. And in many cases, the smart NIC is designed, purpose-built to handle things that the CPU, Mr. CPU, isn't really great at. So Mr. CPU is greatly relieved because now he can give things like network traffic inspection, and cybersecurity things like IDS and IPS. And it's kind of a beautiful situation, right? Like we just take this NIC, which pops into the server's PCIe slot, and then take some of the workload off the CPU and give it to the smart NIC. And in many cases, that's kind of our solution. Now I know some of you are probably wondering, where's the GPU? What's he doing? Tell him to get his lazy butt and help out. I wish he could, it's kind of pretty boy. All he cares about is looks, graphics, and some AI stuff. He wasn't designed to help with data traffic forwarding. Now our journey doesn't end here because 
as you know, technology keeps increasing. <laughs> we want to add more servers, do more network traffic, and now the smart Nick's looking kind of dumb Nick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but seriously, we're at the point now where the smart Nick, while he's great, isn't quite enough. So sure, he's helping out our CPU, and it's kind of like we gave him an extra arm a little bit, but he needs more than an extra arm. He needs an arm. Processor. You'll see where I'm going with this. It'll make sense in a moment. I just could not help but make that joke. So here is where the DPU comes in, the data processing unit. And where the CPU and the GPU both have their things they're good at, the DPU, he's good at data processing as the name might imply. Now the DPU is commanded pretty much do the same job as a smart neck to offload the stress from the CPU. But he's a bit different. He's not just an arm, he's a whole body. He's a server being put inside a server. And seriously, that's what the case is. Let me show this thing to you, by the way. This right here is NVIDIA's Bluefield 3 DPU. It's the latest and greatest. Look how beefy this thing is. They refer to it as an SOC or a system on a chip. And the chip, you know, it's right there. Notice I kept the drawings for Smart Nick because that's essentially what this apparatus is. In most cases, the Bluefield 3 DPU will be on a Smart Nick. It'll be part of it. So they actually call it a DPU enabled Smart Nick. And again, it's doing a lot of what a typical Smart Nick might do, except Again, it's its own person. Its own, and I keep saying person, that's kind of weird. It's its own endpoint device. Like it actually is a server inside of a server. And in the case of VMware, which I'm about to demo here in a bit, this is actually kind of crazy. You've got the server, right? Running VMware, ESXi. With vSphere 8 or VMware 8, how do you want to call it, and their distributed services engine, they're actually installing ESXi on this Bluefield DPU. It has its own OS, server inside a server. So what that means is instead of just it helping the CPU with certain tasks like intrusion detection, network traffic inspection, all that kind of stuff, instead of just helping, it's doing it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like we're installing the firewall software, the networking software onto the DPU where the CPU is just like, he just took the job. I don't even know what he's doing. I mean, he knows but it's separate. The DPU is handling the load. Network traffic isn't coming to the CPU, it's coming to the DPU. He's handling everything. Now let me show you the specs on this thing so you can understand the scope here. Check this out. 400 gigabits per second of bandwidth. <laughs> what? Try to do that CPU, try, you can't. This thing has more RAM than your gaming PC. It just does, sorry. And here's where my ARM joke came in. <laughs> It's got an ARM CPU. Now ARM is fantastic because it's power efficient and it's built for high performance processing stuff like data. I mean, with a name like Hercules, how can you not be powerful? And speaking of power, one of the main powerful things it does or allows for is programmability. Doka, which I believe is the NVIDIA SDK for their DPU, allows extreme customization and programmability for the DPU. And you may have noticed here on the right, all the things that it can do, it can handle, which I forgot to mention, we also <laughs> decided to virtualize our storage, software-defined storage. So the CPU was already just gonna die, so we had to just throw the DPU in there. And look at all this networking stuff. It's insane to me, especially as a networking engineer who worked with physical hardware to see all of this be virtualized and accelerated with a DPU. VXLAN, accelerated inside a DPU. Layer four firewall connection tracking. So that really leaves me with one question. When am I gonna get one inside my computer? <laughs> Seriously, could you imagine having a DPU on your computer that allows for that kind of power? I don't need it, but I want it. But I'll, I'll settle for starting with one of my servers one day. Now there's a lot more DPUs and how powerful they are and what they can do. Awesome white papers below. But now I wanna show you hands-on what it kind of looks like performance wise. And actually, I forgot to mention this. You may still be wondering why DPU? Sure, we can add a DPU to the server, but wouldn't it make more sense just to have another server and another one and another one just so the CPU doesn't get stressed out, right? We'll have just a bunch of CPUs. Well, we're going back to the original problem, aren't we? We're filling up our data centers. We're running out of space. We're using too much power and we're inefficient. A DPU, on the other hand, with its ARM processor is much more power efficient. Instead of expanding across multiple servers, add some more horsepower to your one server that's specialized to handle the traffic you're trying to optimize. And by offloading that from the rest of your resources, you're seeing some crazy stuff like 30% efficiency increases. Let me show you. So I got the example, right? NVIDIA gave me access to their data center and their VMware vCenter environment. And yes, with VMware vSphere 8, you can use DPUs. You can assign them to your virtual machines to be used. Now, as part of my lab and playing with this, I had to set up some things. This included virtual machines and even configuring some switches and stuff in NSX, which 
okay, NSX, <laughs> which includes their, you know, their virtualization of networking and firewall and security stuff. This was super fun. Now, the first thing I got to do in the lab was test something that wasn't possible before. You see, traditionally when using a smart NIC with VMware, which you could do, it involved doing what's called PCIe pass-through, which works for a lot of things, except when you want to do things like vMotion, which vMotion is so cool. It allows you to move a virtual machine from one physical host to another. So like one data center to another data center. I've used this a million times. But with PCIe pass-through, that breaks. <laughs> when you try to vMotion, you lose connection to that smart NIC. It just doesn't work out. Kind of a pain. But with VMware 8, vSphere 8, and their distributed services engine, which was previously called Project Monterey, they now have what's called UPT or universal pass-through. Actually, UPT stands for Uniform Pass-Through. And you can use this with NVIDIA DPUs, which means, and you're seeing this right now as I'm doing this, I can assign the DPU as a NIC to a virtual machine. Again, by the way, the DPU is nestled safely in the PCIe slot of the server, but it's also running its own OS, which is kind of crazy, ESXi. So that server has the DPU as its NIC, and I can vMotion that server over to another host, and it just works. I don't have to worry about it, which is kind of killer. The VMware engineers eat your heart out. It's a cool feature. But now, let's test the speed of DPUs. Now, NVIDIA set up a pretty cool test. We're transferring data between Redis servers, which Redis is a database, essentially. They gave me a test and a script to like transfer data over, first of all, example one, a regular NIC. A NIC that was using the CPU for its networking. The CPU is having to deal with that stuff. And then we switch over to using the DPU, the machines that have the DPU installed. So here are the tests right now. First, let's run the standard NIC test and see what the performance is. So not too bad, bandwidth was 64 megabits per second, latency 0.27231 milliseconds, 548,000 operations per second. By the way, this entire lab was done with a 25 gigabit ethernet cluster. If you wanna know more details about this setup, we've got a link to NVIDIA's white paper below. Now let's test the DPU. Oh my gosh, that's so stinking fast. Did you see that? 90 megabits per second. Latency 0.19, 770,000 operations per second. Do the math, I'm not gonna do it, but that's just really fast, right? Now what's even crazier about this test is you know, the DPU obviously performed way better, but at the same time, the CPU is still there chilling. <laughs> like he wasn't stressed out. So he's over there just being a powerhouse for what he's good at and the DPU is doing what he's good at. Everything is great. Whereas, you know, just the standard NIC test, the CPU is stressed out. He's like, ah. So keep that in mind when you compare these numbers. It's not only better, it's more efficient because the CPU is still doing his thing with all the other servers. He's not stressed out. We're using less power. And this right here is the future of virtual machines, how we're designing our data centers. DPUs are the future. As we do more advanced things like, I don't know, AI, we'll have specialized DPUs that can handle things like this. Now, as Abby mentioned earlier, this was just done on a 25 gigabit per second cluster. So you might be wondering, Chuck, you said 400 gigabits per second, where is that? That's why you don't see it here. This was one test with one application with one workload. And the point was to demo what DPUs can do for a workload, which this was kind of crazy. Now, if you do want to understand the true scale of maxing this out, NVIDIA has a white paper below. Check that out. It's a fun read. Grandma, go subscribe to Network Chuck. What are you doing? 